Hello and welcome to this Electromaker Educator episode. My name is Robin Mitchell and in today's episode we will be taking a closer look at the Inbeetle IDE, what makes it awesome and how it opens the gates to RISC-V. Now for those who want to jump straight ahead to the 10 cent microcontroller and all the fuss around that, you can jump to the chapter Meet the CH32V. And for those who want to see the Embeetle IDE in action, you can jump to the chapter Embeetle has joined the chat. Finally, for those who want to see some working examples, you can either stop this video and try it yourself, or better, jump to the chapter Embeetle Hardware Software Demonstration. Not jumping? Great. Let's get started. Unless you have been living under a rock like a beetle for the last five years, then you should already be familiar with the term RISC-V. However, despite the overuse of this buzzword, there are those who don't exactly fully understand what RISC-V means. Simply put, RISC-V is an instruction set architecture that describes what instructions a CPU needs to be able to do and how those instructions should work together. These instructions include addition, subtraction, memory operations, and branching. Basically, it describes an assembly language. However, RISC-V itself isn't a processor, so a RISC-V CPU is one that executes RISC-V compatible code, just like an ARM processor, x86-6502, or my personal favorite, the Z80, which incidentally is an offshoot of the earlier Intel instruction set. Furthermore, RISC-V doesn't describe anything about the hardware whatsoever, so two different RISC-V processors developed by two different boffins could be entirely different, one being designed by three nanometer transistors and the other one from large relays, but both would run the same code and produce the same answer. The beauty behind the RISC-V instruction set is that it's open source and entirely free with no licenses or royalties, but the processor itself may not be. So make sure you get that in your head. RISC-V language, free. RISC-V processors, depends on who made it. It's a bit like the combustion engine. No one owns the concept of an engine, but a physical interpretation is. So why is this cool? Well, by having all RISC-V code compatible to some degree, barring unique and special instructions, which by the way is a stupid thing to do in a generic processor, means that engineers have more freedom of choice when choosing a RISC-V device. It also makes the end design cheaper, eliminating license fees to the RISC-V foundation, and you have complete freedom to do as you wish with the hardware and its RISC-V implementation. Unfortunately, for all the greatness that is RISC-V, it does have its downsides, and they are pretty major. The primary issue facing RISC-V is software support, as the instruction set is still not widely used compared to x86 and ARM, it often lacks development tools, libraries, and compilers, so engineers are extremely limited when using RISC-V. Secondly, most RISC-V devices are integrated into the silicon of larger chips, and not the chips that you or I would typically use. There are no real RISC-V microcontrollers in DIP packages that can be inserted into a breadboard, and if there are, well, they are certainly very hard to get a hold of. Worse, most of these devices come from the Far East, which makes getting a hold of them very difficult, and unless you know how to speak Mandarin like the good old John Cena, good luck reading those datasheets. Finally, because RISC-V devices are often integrated into overcomplicated devices and or have little support, only the bravest and most experienced engineers can work with them. When an engineer goes off to work with RISC-V, the rest of us are like those villagers who gaze upon the Spartan warriors as they set off to take on the forces of Xerxes. Come back with your shield or on it. And then he comes in and says, oh sorry, if you jumped ahead you just missed a really funny story, but never mind. With all that risky business sorted, I think it's time we introduce what could be very well the most beautiful chip to hit the shelves that finally opens the RISC-V world to people like you and me. Definitely me, because I'm too stupid to learn how to use mainstream devices. Ain't nobody got time for that. The CH32V is a RISC-V microcontroller that is very similar to the Atmega 168 and 328 commonly found in Arduino Uno and Nano products. However, as this entire video suggests, the CH32V uses a 32-bit RISC-V core, while the Arduino uses an 8-bit core. In addition to the RISC-V CPU, 
the CH32V incorporates 16 kilobytes of flash and two kilobytes of static RAM, which may not seem like a lot, but remember this chip is just 10 cents. That's right, 10 cents. Not 50, not 30, but 10. It doesn't quite get much better than that. Oh wait, it just did. With its 18 GPIO, 10-bit ADC with eight channels, UART, I2C, and SPIP. Furthermore, it also incorporates a GTPM, Advanced TM, System Tick, and two watchdogs. So clearly, this little chip is one hell of a microcontroller. But what voltage does it work on? Well, get ready to have your socks knocked right off because the CH32V works on five volts, meaning that all your older hardware, such as shields, sensors, and motors, will work with the CH32V without the need for voltage dividers or level converters. Now, it's clear that this chip absolutely rocks, but unfortunately, using it can be a bit of a pain because of the problems faced with RISC-V. In particular, finding a suitable IDE that is easy to use, allows for close inspection of code, portable and intuitive. Oh, well, never mind, whatever. Oh, I totally forgot, what an idiot I am. It turns out that thanks to Mbeetal, RISC-V development has never been easier. Recognizing the challenges faced by RISC-V and IDEs in general, a group of brilliant-minded engineers decided that enough was enough and created the Mbeetal IDE. To say that the Mbeetal IDE is the equivalent of the golden gates of heaven opening up to engineers is an understatement and will definitely change your life. Uh, just don't blame me if you suffer from extreme pain when switching to other IDEs afterwards. So where do we start? Well, let's start with the price and subscription fees. Okay, so with that addressed, in that it's totally free, let's move on to the layouts of the IDE. Now, it's very tempting for IDE developers to integrate all kinds of features and options, and while this can be helpful in some instances, in most cases, it just makes things more confusing. Instead, Mbeetle makes things simple with its reduced layout and immediate options, so you can focus on what really matters, the code. When it comes to source files, Mbeetle makes all code, including the libraries, visible to the programmer. This allows you to see exactly what is needed by the project, as well as giving you the opportunity to explore library functions and how they work. Additionally, when projects are created, that project is packaged with all its dependencies, including libraries, into its own project folder, making it a self-contained project. This self-contained concept is absolutely critical because not only are projects completely portable, allowing anyone else to copy and use it, but also allows for every piece of generated code, including the library, functions, output assembly, and startup code to be edited without upsetting other projects. A great example of where this could be game-changing is the good old digital write function. This function is slower than a 96-year-old driver with glaucoma, and that's because how it needs to account for various different microcontroller platforms. But in your code, you could change the library definition with an assembler-optimized version, and thus be super fast. Of course, you could also change startup code to place your program somewhere else in memory, perform a specific assembler task, or just sit in a loop simply because you want it to. This self-contained feature is also great for eliminating the need for others to find libraries and install them, which is not only messy, but also potentially a security issue, as you can never be sure if you've downloaded the right library. Thus, all dependencies are with your project. Now, isn't that great? If someone who copies your project doesn't have all the needed tools, well, Mbeetle has you covered there too, as it will automatically download and install anything you need. But where are these files installed, you may be wondering? Well, Mbeetle doesn't have an installer, and anything it installs is kept in its own folder. Simply put, you unzip Mbeetle, and that is the working directory for it, where all settings, preferences, and downloaded tools are put. This means that you can put Mbeetle on a USB flash drive and carry it around in your pocket. At this point, I think Mbeetle really needs to get a USB stick in the shape of a beetle. Share your thoughts in the comment area below. If it wasn't clear at this point, Mbeetle supports RISC-V, but did you know it also supports plenty of other hardware platforms? 
Firstly, it works with a wide range of different Arduino boards, including the Uno and Nano. So even if you don't decide to jump into the sweet goodness that is RISC-V, you can stick with your older hardware. Secondly, it also supports STM32 and its Giga device clones. Those microcontrollers are great for more serious commercial products, and the STM32 parts have the advantage of using the same register definition across different devices, making code highly portable. For those who are a bit braver, Inbeetle also supports the Nordic NRF52833 and NRF52840, which are low-powered wireless socks that pack one hell of a commercial punch. Other companies supported by Inbeetle include WCH, NXP, and Nuvoton. Nuvoton, it's very strange. Anyway, if you want to see the entire list of supported devices, stop being lazy and go check out their website. See link in the description. Okay, so the first thing we need to do is download Inbeetle. And this is very simple because we only have to go to here, type in Inbeetle, go to the official website, and under here we should see Get Inbeetle for free, which is great scroll down for Windows 64-bit and click the second one because I don't like .7z files. I'm gonna go for the .zip. And then once that's downloaded, we go ahead and open it to extract it. Once your zip file has been extracted, all you need to do is open that folder, open the second folder, and then double click and beetle.exe and that will start the IDE. Now, as you can see here on this IDE, there's an update available. So I'm going to go ahead and update it. And as you can see, no need to mess around with anything. It will sort itself out for me. So with that update done, it's time to create our basic RISC-V project. So here we go ahead and click Create, and it gets us the project list. We will select the vendor as WCH. And from this list, we're going to select the V003 microcontroller. Click Create, it does its thing. And once that's done, it creates us the project, which we can work with. Now here we have some options. We're going to stick with the GNU RISC-V X-Pack and the flash tool. We're going to stick with the open OCD WCH 0.11. And this is what we were mentioning before. It needs a tool, it doesn't have it. So it automatically finds the tool and puts it into the Embeetle folder. Now, as we can see here, we have the limited set of tools, which are the only ones we need. Cleaning the project, building the project, flashing the device, debugging the device and the monitor, which is a serial monitor. We have our main view here, which is the main.c uh, file. On the right, we have the file tree, so we can see everything about our project. We've got the symbols in our project, like the different functions and the variables. We have diagnostics, which is useful for knowing when things go wrong. And we have a dashboard, which lets us play with different things, like the board that we're using, the microcontroller that we're using, the probe, the tools, etc. Now here is the project folder. And as you can see, everything about our project gets put into this one folder. And we could copy the entire contents of this folder, give it to somebody else, and they could build this thing with no issues. So going back to here, we can go ahead and click build to build this blinking example. Once that's done, we can connect our CH32V microcontroller and then flash it to program and watch it run. Now, let's see how we connect the CH32V to this Windows PC and program it with Embeetle. Now, this is where one of the really cool features of Embeetle comes in. You can right click the board here and click help. And when you do this, you get this window, which gives you some different links about how to use the board. Now, in our case, let's see how we connect this particular board to Embeetle. So we can go through this example here that shows us how we connect this thing to the WCH link, which is a small programmer. And we've got a really nice picture here showing where the different wires go. So let's go and connect this up. If when you try to flash your device and you get this kind of error where it can't seem to find your probe, it may turn out that your probe actually needs a driver. Luckily for us, again, Embeetle provides us with all the information that we need. So we can use this link down here to look at the probe installation instructions. Not only does the guide show us the pinout for this programmer, it also shows us the installation files for the driver, and it also gives us the switch mode guide, which allows us to switch between ARM and RISC-V. So if we go back to the Embeetle IDE and click flash, this time, as you can see, it's connected, it's working, and if we go over to the camera, what we should be able to see is the thing blinking. And that is a RISC-V device programmed. 
Now the last feature we will look at is the Embeetle debug capabilities supported by the WCH link. The first thing we need to do is click debug and then click the connect icon. This connects to the WCH link and puts everything into debug mode, including the IDE. Going back to the main.c file, we can add a breakpoint by clicking the gutter here. This will add a breakpoint to when we try and write a bit to the GPIO. So now if we go to the debugger, we turn on the camera, which is now looking at our system. We can click run and it stops right there. We can click run again. It turns on the LED and stays there. We can go back to the debugger, see all the stuff that's going on inside our code and click run again. And as you can see, the LED turns off. So we can add breakpoints wherever we need. And I, I believe we are actually completely uh, free to do so as many as we want unlike some microcontrollers which tend to limit you to around three or two. And one more thing I'd like to add, if you're like me and a complete nutcase, you probably would like to go ahead and download the entire datasheet and reference manual for the processor, the CH32V, 003 and the other ones. And I do recommend you actually download it because the datasheet is very, very good. It's written very well, clearly describes how things work. It's only 183 pages, which sounds like a lot, but I do promise you it's not. It's definitely worth printing. And this thing goes through all the different register definitions and how they all work. And it's really nice to use when programming the RISC-V chip. A hell of a lot easier than a lot of other microcontrollers I've been using recently. So grab yourself this manual. Wrapping things up, RISC-V is clearly an awesome instruction set, but it also suffers from a number of development issues, including poor software support, IDEs, and devices. While the CH32V is a great chip, Again, its software support is somewhat poor, and trying to use it on popular platforms such as the Arduino IDE has its fair share of challenges. But thanks to Embeetle, using the RISC-V platform couldn't be easier. Thanks to its self-contained project model, lack of installation, automatic downloading of tools, and full access to all libraries used in a project, providing a high degree of customization. Of course, you can also use a whole range of other development systems within Beetle, allowing you to explore different hardware platforms. And because Embeetle automatically downloads all the tools you need as you need them, there is no clutter and no persistent files. Finally, the free nature of Embeetle means that you don't pay a dime to use it, no signups and no registration. So, if it's something you don't like because you are too ignorant to accept the change and work with newer systems, then you can just squash it like a bug on the floor, wiping away any dreams it may have had and everything it could have been. If you want to show your support for the Electromaker Educator and help pay for my new studio and workshop that I use to create these videos, then consider heading over to the Electromaker store where you can find all the things you could ever need for any project. Thanks for watching. This is Robin Mitchell, signing off.